Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. This is the week of April 12, 2022. And this week we get four stories. The first one is I'm really excited about. We have a source for local drone pilots to find, well, local regulation, and this has been a long time coming. We'll talk about the Mini 3. There's been some leaked photos, and uh, we hope that this thing is right around the corner. We'll talk about the Mavic 3 Enterprise, which uh, that's a big question mark right here, but somebody pretty smart found out some pictures from uh, DJI that they leaked, and uh, we're going to take a look at it. And then lastly, we'll talk about the Alta X, which is becoming a blue SUAS. Let's get to it. In the first story this week, I'm actually really excited because this is a project we've been working on for a long time and uh, everybody in our team has been putting a lot of work into this, uh, especially Johan. And uh, we know that you guys have been having a really hard time finding a single source of uh, information for local drone regulation. And this is something that we've taken too hard because it's the same thing for us when we go fly. And so over the last couple of months, we've put together a place, a location where you can find all the local drone regulation and also edit it and keep it up to date. And this is the biggest thing that we found with other places. There's one or two other places that, are, that have been trying to do this, but these places always go out of date. And, and, and with the, the new system that we have, it's a wiki, if you're familiar with what a wiki page is, all the information is going to be contained on that wiki, along with actually suggestion for places to fly. Every time I go to visit a city, I want to find where everybody else is flying and the cool places to fly. And so this is what this wiki is going to be doing. And the best part is that you can submit your contribution and help us keep the place up to date and also send us all the information about uh, local regulation. So you'll have the ability to do an up and down vote for the locations to fly so that they can come up and, and you'll see the best location to fly in a specific city. You can submit photos and suggest different places where you like to fly so we can add them. You can submit new regulation or help us keep the local regulation, the current regulation, stay up to date. And if you look at the Phoenix page in Arizona, this is the perfect example of what we will achieve for the rest of the country. We've populated this with about 15 different places to fly, all the regulation. You can also access the information about the airspace right in one location. And the best part is you can actually see those locations from Google Earth and have a good idea of what uh, everything looks like. So if you want more information, please go to pilotinstitute.com slash drones, and then you'll see here uh, all the different links. Also, on top of all this, we're launching new Facebook groups. We've created 51 different Facebook groups for each of the states. And in there, you'll be able to join, network with other people, get information about local UAS regulation and about local uh, community. This is the perfect place to organize your meetups, learn about the local regulation, fight the local regulation. Uh, we are partnering and we've been partnering for a long time with DSPA, the Drone Service Provider Alliance. Uh, when you guys find local regulation, that's kind of odd. You usually email it to us. Well, here we'll have one location where we can do all of that and work with the SPA to fight it. So uh, make sure that you join your state group. We're going to put a link down in the description so you can find all the different groups that we have. And, uh, and again, I'm really excited about this. This has been a tremendous work, amount of work to put all this together. And then you may log in and you might find some errors or inconsistencies. Please make sure you let us know so we can keep it up to date and make it a great tool for the community. All right, let's go ahead and check out these leaked pictures of the new Mini 3. It looks like there is a redesign to the gimbal. It's hard to really determine from the pictures leaked, but it appears the gimbal possibly goes into portrait mode. We'll have to wait and see when the drone is actually announced. There is also the potential that this drone will be sub 250 grams. And on the camera, we see that there is an F 1.7 aperture, which I think is really interesting. Should be great in low light. We also see they redesigned the propellers and there is obstacle avoidance. Either way, the Mini 3 Pro is looking incredibly promising for anybody looking to purchase the new Mini 3 drone. You can check it out in the link, check out Drone XL's article with the high resolution images. All right, so I heard that somebody was called smart. Greg, did you call me smart? No. Greg, am I smart? No. So if you guys saw on DJI's social media platforms or their, their channels from their Instagram to their Twitter, they put out a little, uh, I guess, joke on April Fool's Day of their new airbag system on the Mavic 3. But if you look really closely, there's actually a different camera on the Mavic 3. It resembles the camera of the M30T. Now I've got the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced here. And when this drone came out, it was basically already out of date. The Mavic 3 was right behind this drone when it came out. So it'd be really awesome to see them actually come out with some sort of Mavic 3 enterprise 
Enterprise. If you also look on the arm, it almost sh shows like it says Mavic 3i or something like Mavic 3s, but regardless, that looks like a pretty clear shot of a new Enterprise version of the Mavic 3, and it should be pretty cool to see if they finally end up dropping that. All right, and the last story this week is the Alta X is now a blue UAS. Uh, if you're familiar with the Freefly Alta X, it's a pretty large uh, multi-rotor aircraft, uh, and that brings the list of S blue UAS to eight aircraft in total. Uh, there is a wide range of payloads that can be put on the Alta X uh, from EO to IR gimbals, and, uh, and, and it can be used for a lot of different things, mapping, cameras, LIDAR, uh, and then a lot of different delivery capabilities as well. It's got a 35-pound payload, a 50-minute flight time, and then the military, I'm sure, is going to be able to uh, add a lot of different payload into this. This is good because we've been pretty critical of the Blue UAS version 1.0, which was, well, which was uh, not really designed for a, lot, a whole lot of different application. Uh, we're happy to see existing platforms being added to the Blue UAS list and hopefully help uh, our troops and, and those that use the Blue UAS uh, to do their job uh, properly. And that's it. That's all we have for you this week. As always, like, subscribe, leave your comments. Uh, we actually turn the comments on on our videos and uh, because we like interacting with you. And I hope you enjoy having our guests this week uh, with us, these two guys right here. And uh, we will see you next week. And uh, have a great week. Peace. Peace. Stay original. <laughs>